Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Anthony, Anthony Clinton, and I grew up in a Catholic home. I want to give you my story, my testimony of how I became a Christian and the lead up in the way in which God did a, a wonderful miracle to save my life from a, a life of drugs and a life of uh, violence and a lot of many, many sins that were oppressing my life. God worked a miracle, uh, many miracles actually. Uh, when I was young, I was brought up in a, a very strict Catholic home. Now, my mother was trained to be, pre, prior to getting married, my mother was trained to be uh, uh, a nun, and my father was trained to be a uh, brother in the Catholic uh, monastery, and they were Maris brothers, and he was trained there. And later on, and I'm thankful, very thankful, they decided that that wasn't their calling. They decided to get married and... Um, I was brought up in the strictest form of the Catholic Church. Um, they taught me every detail uh, and, uh, about um, the prayers and I was also involved in the um, Catholic Mass I, very early in the morning. I remember 6am I used to trot off to, uh, to the Catholic Church which was in a place called Tamora and we'd uh, trot off to the Catholic Church and I was there to be an altar boy in a very freezing cold morning. But with all this happening, with all the religion around me, um, I knew that there, even as a child, that I had major problems, but I couldn't deal with those problems. The, the, the real problem that I had was, which I didn't know at the time, and that, it, that is, I was possessed of the devil. Now, the devil used to do, cause me to do many, many, very, very, um, I was a violent child. Uh, many bad things that I did was, uh, I was very cruel to animals. And things that I did were filled with violence. Now, the, the, there's a beautiful scripture in the Bible uh, which relates to my testimony and how God delivered me. And it's uh, Psalm 40 and verse, uh, beginning from verse 1. I want to read that to you because this psalm speaks about the miracle that God did eventually in my life. Uh, psalm 40 verse 1. I waited patiently for Jehovah and he bowed down to me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock and gave uh, sureness to my steps. And he has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in Jehovah. This is a psalm that has a powerful effect in my life and it's related to my testimony. You see, being a violent child, I was always in trouble with fighting. Uh, at school, I, was, I used to have a group of guys with me and we used to go around collecting money. I was like, a, um, even at the age of, of 15 and 14, I was going around like a, a mafia figure in the school and I was commanding uh, these children to give me their money and if they didn't, I'd start belting them and start punching them and I was very strong and very violent. Now the word of God says that anyone who does violence to shed anyone's blood shall flee to the pit and don't let anybody stop him. And that's exactly what would happen in my life. Uh, I went from this violent streak, I mean, uh, constantly fighting with my friends uh, in the town. I was uh, involved in fights in the streets. I uh, started drinking at the age of 15 and I was involved in street fights uh, outside the pubs and inside the pubs. I was just a, a common street brawler. Shortly after this, someone introduced drugs to me. Now, I, in the beginning, hated drugs. I said I wouldn't touch them ever and in, in, in fact there was one occasion where I informed the police about certain people that were having drug, a drug party. So I hated drugs. But the power of sin and the power of Satan leads you from one step to another. I started to um, experiment with drugs. I started uh, smoking marijuana. Uh, and I, I, the music and the drugs went together. The heartbeat and the motivation of the drug life comes from the music. Now, if you look into the music, you will find that together with the music, is the inspiration to take drugs. 
and also when the, uh, the groups such as the Beatles started taking drugs, then multitudes, it was just like a, a spreading fire and, and a spreading disease. It went, when, the, when people started to hear the Beatles were involved in drugs, then it spread everywhere and it became the common thing, drugs and rock music together. Now, I started to feel terrible about these drugs and I started to feel that uh, I was, uh, was, was going to die. I remember taking an LSD trip and I, I was certain that this was the end of my life. I felt that I was even in hell already and I was going to die from the effect of this uh, drug trip. And I, it was nothing that felt good to me. And I, I was like someone uh, who was tormented while I had the drug and then I sort of brushed it aside and then kept taking more and more and more deceived. But still I felt the terror of drugs and I wanted to get out. So I started to look for an answer and a way out. I spoke to my father and my father uh, got me into a, a monastery and I went into the monastery and nothing changed in my life because as soon as I came back out of the monastery, I was back on drugs. I hitchhiked to the Gulf of Carpentaria. I, I hitchhiked to, the, uh, to escape the drugs. I was trying to get away. I went up to uh, the Gulf of Carpentaria, a place called Corumba, worked on the boats for three months. No change. I came back to Campbelltown, saw my mates, and straight back into the drugs. I was trying to find a way of escape. I started to read the Bible. And when I read the Bible, all I could, I looked at the, the judgment, the terrible judgment that was going to come on the world. And I, I thought God was going to punish me, send me to hell, and I couldn't be, I couldn't be free. I, I looked at parts in the Bible that made God uh, the, the fierce judge, and there was no hope. And then I was going to go into hell and there was no, you know, I, I couldn't see a God of mercy saving me. Unfortunately, no one had ever explained the God of mercy. I heard all about religion. I knew the religious practices, but no one told me about the love of God and the mercy of God and the compassion of God. So I only knew a God of judgment. So I began to pray and call on the name of the Lord. And I said, God, if you're out there anywhere, wherever you are, Please save me. So in this process, I remember one time, this, this is very clear in my mind. This, this is a very clear memory in my mind. I uh, had my Bible, my, I had my Catholic Bible, and I was dressed like a hippie. And outside of our town, township, there's, a, there's like hills. And it was in the days that I was uh, on drugs, those hills were just um, full of bush. And, and the idea of when you're, when you're Catholic is to do penance to show God you're serious about your life. And so what I was going to do was I was going to walk into this bush and I was going to tread on thorns and punish my body and try to find God. And I, I went up on a blazing hot day and to the top of this hill and I knelt down and I started to pray. And I let all the flies crawl all over my head. They were crawling all over my body. And I let this affliction happen to me. It was penance I was doing to try and get a message from God. And so I, I knelt there until my, I was so exhausted I fainted. And then when I got up, I started to walk back thinking that I never heard anything from God. But something came into my head, a voice, uh, or just came into my mind, go back and wait. And that's exactly what it did. I went back and I, I was in, couldn't get off drugs. And three years in pain and agony, trying to get off drugs, and I... I didn't know that God had a plan, but I was going through that for three years of suffering and pain on drugs. Someone one day said to me, look at the music. There's a message in the music. And I started to open the music and started to read the words and find out there indeed was bad news in the, in the music. The music was talking about hell, blaspheming God and all sorts of satanic things. And I said, I know that the message of hell and death is bad news in the music. I need to find a way out. And so I, I looked for every avenue to try and escape. A Dutch man came to the town and he had two beautiful daughters and they were witnessing on the streets about Jesus. Now, when he came onto the streets, I remember his daughter walked up to, up to me and her face was shining. It was beaming. And I was surprised. I mean, I looked at her and, and it caught my attention how her face was so shining and her, her smile was good. And she said, do you believe in Jesus? And she gave me a leaflet. You know, I never ever read that leaflet. But when I saw that 
presence of, of, of God in her face, that, that beautiful shining presence of the Holy Spirit in her face, that brought my attention to say, these people have the answer for me. And I started to go to their, their uh, coffee shop. And when I went down there at one, one stage, this tall Dutch man, uh, he was talking to me, and I said, I need a place to stay for the night. I really need a place where I, where I can stay. And um, he, said, I'll, I'll, he said, wait for me, I'm going to go and pray about it. So he walked out and he prayed about it and came back. He said, okay, you can stay. Now, you see how God works behind the scenes. I didn't know that God had such a miracle plan that would prepare this family this man and his wife, for me, when I would arrive. The, his wife had a dream. Before I came into the scene, his wife had had a dream. In the dream, she said she saw this filthy, dirty, slimy river. It was a pit of filth. And in, while she stood on the bank watching this filthy pit, someone was in the middle struggling to get to the bank. Someone was trying to escape that river and she thought maybe God was showing that this was her, it was going to happen to her. So in speaking to God, she said, God, this is not me. I'm a Christian. You saved me from that terrible pit. And the pit in the Bible talks about sin and the terrible life of sin that leads to hell. And she looked into the river and she said, that's not me, I'm a Christian, but can I help that person? Well, I turned up on the household, in the household, uh, on the doorstep, I had long hair, I was a drug crazed street germ, nobody would care for someone in the state that I was in, no, the po police hated me, the town hated me, the, the, the families of the people I beat up hated me, uh, as a school kid I was kicked out of the school for fighting and my parents had gone away, they were the only ones who had any, if any love, they were the only ones that had some form of love, but I was a hated person and I stood on that doorstep and the dream she had gave her a gift of faith to believe God had placed me there. So I, I came into that house off the streets, a terribly uh, uh, sick-minded sick and possessed, devil-possessed drug addict. Well, I came into that home and they allowed me to stay the night. They had two, children, uh, two girls and one, one boy and uh, I stayed overnight. The next day, they asked me to pray. The, the husband had gone away to work and they called a minister. The next day they asked me to pray and I knelt down in the lounge room and I asked, just simply said, God, I, I need you. I don't want anything to do with drugs or anymore. And when that happened, I knew I was changed. A miracle happened. I was completely transformed. And every part of my drug life, everything that I was involved in drugs, all the sin I was involved in, I knew my life was totally healed from that instantly. I was so happy. I could feel God's love. And shortly after this, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the mighty power of God, and I went back into the city and I preached Jesus to everybody that I knew. All the drug pushers, all the people on the street. I went back and told them that Jesus saved me. And even one friend said, looked at me and said, I can see your face is shining. And it was the Holy Spirit. What I saw in that young girl, that beautiful shining presence of God, I had myself. And they could see the shining light of Jesus as I was preaching Christ on the streets. And now to this day, I've continued to do the same, to preach the Jesus that saved me on that day. And from now until eternity, I will continue to do the same. That beautiful experience of salvation came that day. I was brought up out of the miry pit, placed upon the rock Jesus Christ, and I would many would see and believe, and I would constantly give praise to God for the miracle He did. In Jesus' name, it's been a blessing sharing my testimony, and I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to give this uh, message to you. Jesus loves you. He died for your sins, and He can do for you what He did for me. He changed my heart by a miracle because I opened my heart when he was coming to reach out to me through these people. My life was changed. Yours can be too. God bless you.